Greetings, friends. Welcome to our devotional study today. We are in Revelation chapter 4. Uh, as we move into the fourth chapter of Revelation, I have already mentioned that we are heading into strange country. Uh, we are just leaving the transition of um, the study of the seven churches, which certainly spoke much to us in that study. And now we are seeing the importance of this verse. And if you had missed yesterday, I just really encourage you to go back as we begin to look at Revelation 4 to see the importance of this verse. We saw that it is a transitional verse, and we see that through the words after this and hereafter in that verse. And uh, we also saw that it is a typical verse, that it pictures for us. And there are so many pictures uh, in the book of Revelation. Now we want to look at the illustrations of this verse uh, as we continue our study on Revelation 4 and verse 1. It says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. We know, of course, that the book of Revelation is filled with signs and symbols and illustrations, and we're going to see that as we move through the book of Revelation. As a matter of fact, back in Revelation chapter 1 and in verse 1, it says, Revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So that's a reminder to us that there are going to be many symbols used in the book of Revelation. And uh, when we see those symbols, we will see words such as like or as to show us that John is speaking in symbolic language in those verses. So the use of symbols in no way changes what God says. Everything that he says will come to pass as a literal event. So you say, if that's the case, why is it that John uses symbols? He merely uses the language of symbolism to describe actual events. He uses symbols so that people of all generations will be able to understand what it is that he's talking about. So there are two symbols or illustrations given to encourage us in this verse. So let's look at those symbols today. First of all, they involve the eyes. It says, after this, I looked and behold. He says, a door was opened in heaven. So when John looks, he sees something and what he sees is a door opened in heaven. This phrase, a door opened in heaven, literally means that there was a door standing open in heaven. This is the third door that we have encountered in Revelation thus far. Of course, we just looked at one in Revelation 3.20 when Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. But in our text that we look at, the door in heaven is shown to be standing open. The tense of that verb means that this door has been opened and it continues to stand open for all those who desire to enter. Now, as we compare scripture with scripture, it becomes abundantly clear who the door is. Come back to John chapter 10 and in verse 9. John chapter 10 and in verse 9, Jesus is speaking and here's what he says in John chapter 10 and in verse 9. He says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. So there Jesus tells us very clearly that he is the one who is the door. So people do not go to heaven through the door of a church, regardless of what the name is over the door of that church. People do not go to heaven through their good works. They do not go to heaven by their own power. The only door into salvation and the only door into heaven is Jesus Christ. He is the one who died. He is the one who rose again. He is the one who paid the price for our salvation. He is the only one to God. Remember what Jesus said in John 14, 6. It says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we know that he is the door, that he is the only way that somebody can get into heaven. Now, let me encourage you, if you've never been saved, today that door for salvation stands wide open. That door to heaven stands wide open. If you will allow, it will allow whosoever will to enter and to find peace, rest, salvation in heaven. 
But friends, we need to understand that when the Lord calls his people home to heaven, when the rapture of the saints takes place, by and large, that door of salvation will close. Yes, there will be people that are saved after the rapture during the tribulation period, but it is only those who have never had a chance to hear the gospel before the rapture of the saints that will have the opportunity to be saved in the tribulation. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and in verse 11, it says this. Of course, 2 Thessalonians 2 is all about future events, and it says, For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So the Bible makes it very clear for those who have heard the gospel prior to the rapture that God is going to send them a strong delusion and they will believe the lie of the Antichrist. Beyond that, if they will not get saved when it's easy, they certainly will not get saved uh, when it is difficult because in the tribulation period, getting saved will most likely mean that that person will give their life as a martyr. As an example, and we don't have time to go there, but the ten virgins in Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13, five failed to prepare, and by the time they were ready, the Bible tells us in Matthew 25, 10, that the door was shut. Let me just summarize that account by saying this. It is foolish to presume upon time when it comes to your eternal soul. Friends, if you've been waiting to walk through the door of salvation, wait no longer. The time to enter will soon be gone forever. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. In Proverbs 27 and in verse 1, it says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. So this involves the eyes, this, this symbolism here. But it also involves the ears. Notice back in Revelation chapter 4, Ending verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first trumpet which I heard was, notice, as it were of a trumpet. So there's a symbolism, as it were of a trumpet talking with me. He didn't say a trumpet was talking. He said the voice that was speaking to me was, as it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Not only did John see a door, he heard a trumpet. Again, this is the language of symbolism. He says, as it were. He said, the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. What John heard was not an actual trumpet, but a noise like that of a trumpet. In other words, he's saying the voice was piercing, it was loud, and it was a voice that demanded attention. John says that this trumpet was a voice. We do not need to speculate on that. And, and as I read that, I couldn't help but think of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16 when he says there was a voice like a trumpet. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and in verse 16, we read these words. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dig in Christ shall rise first. When Jesus comes, that trumpet will call the living up. But friends, it is his shout that will call the dead. Now, I don't know what he is exactly that Jesus will say when he comes. He may say, come up hither. He may say, come forth. He may say, come home. But whatever he says on that day, his voice will cause gravity to lose its hold on these bodies. And we will be changed into his likeness and we will fly away to our heavenly home. Let me ask you today as we conclude our study for today and tomorrow we'll conclude our study in verse 1 and get rolling through this chapter at a little faster pace but let me ask you today as we close this study are you ready christ is coming are you going friends the bible makes it very clear in amos 4 12 as well as in many other places that we must prepare to meet our god you don't need to be a bad person in order to miss heaven and go to hell all you need to do is fail to prepare to meet God. And the only way that we can do that is by acknowledging our sin, recognizing that God loves us, that he died on the cross for our sin, and that it is only through his death on the cross that you and I can have forgiveness of sin and everlasting life. Has there been a time and has there been a place that you've called upon his name for salvation? Friends, Jesus Christ could come back at any moment. If you have not made that choice, do not delay. Christian, 
whatever you got to do, do it today while you have time. Make the most of every opportunity to be a witness for him. Have a great day.